Hey, Remote Pilot 101 fans and users, Jason Shepard here, and we've been seeing a lot of amazing test results come back. By the way, we're about to cross over 11,000 past tests. How amazing is that? Making Remote Pilot 101 really the market leader in part 107 test prep. But I want to take a moment because what we've learned from these nearly 11,000 past tests is it is so heavy on charts. In fact, inside the course, I say again and again, review lesson six, which is charts and airspace and everything we're going to talk about here today, but go back and review it again. So if you are a customer of ours and you haven't watched lesson six at least twice, maybe that's some homework there for you because it makes up such a large portion of your test. Maybe you've already passed your test though, and let's go ahead and see how you're doing uh, with remembering VFR aviation sectional charts. I pulled one here from kind of near our neck of the woods. This is Jacksonville, Florida area, and we can kind of look, and there's a lot of complex airspace happening here. You can see my cursors in the top left-hand portion of your screen. Let's zoom in here just a bit to kind of see what we can learn here. My cursor again is in the top left-hand part of your screen here, and just down and to the right, there's a solid magenta line, kind of a thick magenta line. What on earth kind of airspace is this? If you said class C, class Charlie airspace, you're absolutely correct. Now remember, class Charlie airspace works in layers. We use the analogy with Bravo and Charlie Airspace like it's an upside down wedding cake, like a multi-tiered wedding cake. For example, this is from the surface to 4,000 feet, this inner ring here, see it? Whereas this outer ring here is from 1,200 to 4,000 feet. So oftentimes we get asked questions. We have live chat and phone support through remotepilot101.com as well as email support. And they'll say, hey, Jason, I'm out here in uh, you know, Callahan, let's say, can I go fly? And it looks like I'm, uh, there's some class Charlie airspace. And you look and you say, okay, there's also uh, an echo transition area. I'll talk about that here in a second. But really, the, air, the Charlie airspace doesn't start till 1,200 feet. The echo transition doesn't start this here, which I'll talk about, till 700 feet. If I'm operating out over here, right, I'm underneath of all that airspace. You have to remember, we're flying in a three-dimensional world. Now, I mentioned and alluded to this transition area. See this faded magenta? This one in this case goes all the way around here, up this way. This one here around Fernandina is a good example. This is telling us where class Echo airspace starts after it's class G, class Golf airspace at the surface, like it is here in Fernandina Beach. How do I know it's class Golf at the surface? Because it's not depicted by anything else. Blue dash line is a delta. Magenta dash line, this is a class echo surface extension. Solid magenta line here, this is my class Charlie. If we look further to the south or north towards Atlanta, you'd see Bravo airspace here, right? So this is class golf airspace here at Fernandina with a class echo transition area around it, meaning Class Echo airspace starts inside of this circle, right? From this circle, which really the edge is over here. So inside of all this area, Class Echo airspace starts at 700 feet. Outside of it, like out over here, over, over the water, we're outside of that, we fall into, or out over here, where it's not depicted by anything else, there's no other airspace. This is called domestic en route, and it's 12. So let me watch my cursor again here. I can go from right here, class echo starts at 700 feet, to outside of it, class echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet. Let's dig a little bit deeper here. Blue dashed lines, class delta airspace. Class delta is not really a wedding cake, it is a single tier cake in this case. It is just a big cylinder from the surface to 2,600 feet. Down here, Cecil Field, which is also a spaceport. That's a new symbol we've added uh, recently to our VFR sectional charts. 2,600 feet. If you look real close, been to this airport many a times here. The Hurlong Airport is kind of tucked in here. Watch, follow the delta. 
See how the delta kind of goes and cuts it out back around by NAS jacks and see how this delta kind of follows and leaves this little cutout for Hurlung. I remember uh, early on in my manned aviation days, I was based at Craig Field and to, from over here. So to get to Hurlung, we had to stay to the north and kind of sneak in this way. You could never take really a straight line to it unless uh, Navy Station Jacksonville let us through. So very complex, very busy airspace in the Jacksonville, Florida area. In a lot of areas, you're flying out. Let's do a little bit more on this quiz here. Let's zoom back in and let's keep looking here. I have here this magenta hash mark here. What are these magenta hash marks that you see here? Well, there's an arrow that leads to it that brings us back to this is an MOA, a military operations area, not to be confused with the restricted area. Can I fly in a military operations area? Well, the answer is yes. Can I fly in a restricted area? The answer is, well, no in this case. And sometimes it depends if it's hot or cold, but usually it's best, especially in the remote pilot world, to err on the side of caution and just say, no, they, we can take certain parameters by calling flight service stations to figure out the status of that airspace. But usually, I say, that answer is going to be no in this case in the remote pilot world. In the manned aircraft world, there's some different ways for us to ask the, uh, the controllers in that case. Let's see if we can find any other good symbols on here to really share. I shared with you, this is something you don't totally see a lot, this dashed magenta line. I already shared this earlier, showing class echo at the surface. This is actually a class echo surface extension because it's coming off of a delta. And what this is, you can see how the runway is laid out here. This is getting a little advanced, but the reason they do this oftentimes is aircraft coming in, like where my cursor is, on a long final approach being vectored in, just to put them in a little bit more protected airspace earlier on, in this case, to keep them in that controlled environment. And honestly, too, we don't want, if it's class echo at the surface here, it's controlled airspace. We can't be flying our drones out here off the coast. So they're protecting those aircraft by keeping drones and everything else out of this airspace as they come on in by making it controlled airspace with that. A few other little things you can see. We have some railroad tracks going through here uh, associated with some power lines as well. Different symbols you're going to be quizzed on for your knowledge test. These are the important things to really know, really understand, and truly have a handle on in the remote pilot world. Again, if you're a customer, if you're a client of ours, I encourage you, I challenge you, you need to go through lesson six again, please. If anything I said to you doesn't make sense, you're a little bit confused, do consider becoming a customer of remotepilot101.com and help us get to 12,000 knowledge tests passed. The course is a one-time fee. It is yours for life. So when you have to renew, when you have to update your certificate, when you have to take the test again, you know you have a great course backed by an amazing company who we started our main business of M0A.com nearly 10 years ago doing FAA test preparation for manned pilots. So we've been around a long time and we know the FAA testing system forwards and backwards and we're not going anywhere. So that lifetime membership for you is it's good for life as you continue, as you excel in your career as as a unmanned aircraft systems operator. So listen, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Can't wait to read your comments, and we will see ya. You've seen online that the Part 107 knowledge test isn't easy. It's not something you can go in alone. Let us be your guide. Let our 57 full 4K training videos really hold your hand and take you through the course step by step to better understand complex topics like airspace, charts, METARs and TAFs and aviation weather. You're able to test on and see the actual FAA Part 107 questions. And lastly, we're gonna help you submit your application to the FAA. Visit remotepilot101.com to learn more.